Hey everybody, my name's Commander Eagle 131, and I'd like to show off the Hope Tech Archer Class Destroyer. I designed the Archer with a want to spice up my space combat. All too often, I'd slap four particle beams on my builds and call it a day. I wanted to look for an alternative method of taking down opponents in space, so I turned to missiles. I honestly got really, really bored of vaporizing the bad guys in a few seconds with particle beams. So enter the Archer Class Destroyer. It's a mostly missile ship requiring a little bit of thought and tact when engaging enemies. It's role played as Hope Tech's entry into large military style craft capable of taking on any sized opponent. So exterior design wise, I took inspiration from a couple different places. The first being a ship called the Kaldari Korax Class Destroyer from an ancient Earth network-based computer game titled EVE Online. The Korax had a real heavy ancient Earth submarine and sailing vessel design. Yes, it's a spaceship. And yes, it resembles an ocean vessel. Look it up, it's an awesome looking ship. The second source is from our own real-world modern-day Hope Tech, the Watchdog Fighter. So my want was to take the watchdog's overall shape and amplify it by injecting my own submarine and sailing vessel looks into it. So the Archer class destroyer is like the watchdog's much larger sibling. So some of these submarine or sailing vessel suggestions include one of my prouder design choices. I wanted to give the bow section something resembling an ancient sailing ship's forecastle. And you heard me right, I said forecastle, not forecastle. That's how ancient sailors pronounced it. I don't know why. And directly behind the forecastle, there's a forward-facing air quote torpedo bay, where one of the missile batteries is mounted. When viewing the archer from either side-on or isometric, I wanted to give that similar body silhouette that ancient Earth submarines had. But at the end of the day, the archer class is a Hope Tech ship, and I didn't want to take that away from the design. Even though EG's ship shop contracted with several other manufacturers, the prime focus is still that heavy metal Pipes everywhere industrial grunge look, except this time with more firepower and packed into a military style naval themed ship. Interior design wise, its layout is very simple yet thought out. I selected halves that I figured might be on the nimble warship of this kind. I like to think that the Archer is able to be deployed on longer term missions, so it has certain things like a berth and captain's quarters for the crew, and an armory break in a center, and the top floor contains engineering and the command center. I'll be giving an interior tour towards the end of the video, so go ahead and just skip there now if you're not interested in heading off into the Builder with us. So let's talk a bit about the Archer specs. It's got a B-Class reactor with an output of 39, crew of 7, and has two missile batteries, with the first one dishing out 360 per shot damage, and the second battery with 282 per shot damage. Shield capacity of 975, hull integrity of 1295, and a mobility rating of 90. So the ship at a glance might not seem too special, especially when compared against ships equipped with particle beams, but remember that my end goal was to build a ship that handles combat differently than I am used to. As such, I have tuned the ship's modules to achieve a nice balance between power, mobility, damage output, cargo capacity, and defenses while utilizing player and NPC skills as buffs. I hate talking about numbers, but I had to do a tiny bit of min-maxing with the reactor's power output so we can run max pips to all important combat modules, and I like to talk about how I did that. All base NPC crew in module number stats I am about to throw at you have mostly been sourced from the awesome website inara.cz. Link is in the description. Okay, let's do a little bit of small min-maxing talk. The reactor I've chosen is the top tier B-class reactor with a total output of 39 power. I wanted to build a ship with at least 12 power pips to one of the missile batteries. The two missile launchers I chose were the Hunter Mag 450 and the Atlatl 280B. The Hunter Mag has a whoppingly large magazine of 10. They consume three power each and we're running four of them. The Atlatls only have four missiles in each magazine, but their per shot damage is much higher. Each Atlatl consumes four power and we're running two of them. We also wanted to build a destroyer so the ship needed to be fast and have decent mobility rating, so 12 power pips to engines were also required. So with the weapons and engine systems taking power priority, the two systems together are consuming 32 power, which doesn't leave much room for anything else. 
The shield I chose is a Tower N420 shield that doesn't give max defense compared to some of its bigger siblings, but the Tower shield only consumes 8 power pips, thus pushing the total consumed power to 40, which is 1 pip over what the reactor can handle, but with my Anutronic Fusion rank 1 skill, I get 1 permanent power output point to all reactors. I also keep Vasco on board, who also has this skill, and his 1 power point stacks with my own. So with Vasco and I's reactor output buffs, power is now balanced, 40 out of 41. We can run max pips to all combat systems, but we can push the reactor just a tiny bit further with some more NPC crew. Omari Hassan, a hireable NPC crew member, has rank 3 shield systems, which is quite high. And with his 20% shield buff, he can push the small tower N420 well above its base defense rating. Not to mention he grants the captain one permanent pip to shields, so that's one free power pip to use elsewhere. Additionally, Sam Ko is a valuable crewmate. He has an incredible rank 4 skill in piloting. I personally already am at max rank piloting, however Sam's skill stacks with mine, and buffs top speed and also gives one freebie power pip to engines, thus now granting us two pips to use elsewhere. He also comes with rank 2 payloads, which buffs our cargo capacity by 10%, which is a nice extra. And lastly, Gideon Aker has a missile weapon systems rank of 2. He should grant us a 10% damage buff, as well as 10% increased missile recharge speed. So having him on board, we should be able to push our two missile batteries a little bit further than their advertised damage. Reload times for both batteries from empty should be around 19 to 20 seconds. Here's a quick shot of all my relevant NPC crew on board my own Archer class, in case you want to copy or give me any suggestions. So having a few spare pips left over now from the two NPC crew, we can actually toss on an extra weapon or two, or upgrade the shield. I personally chose two neutron beam turrets for point defense, however they're mostly cosmetic in nature, as they're kind of weak. <laughs> but power pip management will be required for anything extra you decide to throw on. And one final, but very important, player skill to mention is the Targeting Control System skill. At the time of writing, I personally am currently at rank 2, which grants me 15% reduced target lock time, so I can spend more time on target and less time waiting. If ships are close enough though, I've got no problems with dumb firing the missile batteries, but firing the batteries while locked on is ideal. So to conclude my long-winded presentation of the Archer's Light min-maxing, I basically compromise shield capacity for more firepower, speed, and mobility. Even though it takes a few seconds to achieve a missile lock on a target, my thought is that having a fast and maneuverable destroyer style ship outweighs the reduced shielding and time to lock. Playing in normal difficulty at least, I am able to spend time firing at opponents with the tower shield providing adequate protection. And if I need to run away to reload the missile launchers, or if the shields do indeed drop, I can boost out of there at about 700 meters per second and let everything return to normal. We'll be taking the archer into combat later on in the video, so you can see what I'm talking about. But as a bit of a disclaimer for the numbers you're seeing now, doing the percentage math on these final numbers across all buff stats, most are a tiny bit over what they should be. I must admit, I've got no idea where those numbers are coming from, however, they are all ballparked to the correct percentages we should be seeing. Bugs? Skill magazines? If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments, please. So with that min-maxing talk out of the way, we're almost ready to head into the builder. But before we do that, I have a few disclaimers for you. This will not be a ship builder tool tutorial. This will be a ship build tutorial. I'll be showing you how to build this specific ship and assuming that you're already comfortable with the ship builder. Second, to build the Archer class destroyer, to exacting specifications, you'll need rank 4 ship designs, rank 3 piloting, and to be level 60 or above. Again, this is all required for exacting specifications. You'll be able to build the ship without all that, but your mileage may vary based on your own level and skills, and you'll likely need to do your own reactor power tuning. And last, this ship relies on some heavy glitch building, the flip glitch and the copy glitch. If you don't know how to do these, I'll be providing how-to material on each glitch build during the builder segment. Things like your achievements won't be affected, you won't be labeled as a cheater, and Todd Howard himself won't come banging on your door demanding you give him back all of your customized loading screens. Almost ready to head off into the builder now, but I think you know what's next. We need to go pick up some Star Yard specific modules. First, we're going to be visiting Hope Tech in the Valo system. We're going to pick up two Hope 55 landing gear, 
two Slayton SAE-5660 engines, one Overseer 400 bridge, and one Tower N420 shield generator. Next, we're gonna head to anywhere in UC space. We're gonna pick up two Disruptor 3320 neutron turrets and four Hunter Mag 450 missile launchers. And that is it. So I shall see you in the Builder. All right, so here we are in the Builder. And as you can see, I've got everything exploded out. So right here in front of us, this is our um, Habs layout. Over here, we've got our, what I like to call our big pile of stuff. So this is a big old combination of uh, fuel tanks, engines, structural pieces, uh, that kind of lend to the ship's overall look and shape. Right here I have a separate section for the uh, front part of the ship, the bow section. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of glitch building right here, and it's we're going to be filling in kind of an enclosed space here with, with parts, so I want to keep this a, its own separate um, space. Then over here, we just got some landing gear, which we'll be placing at the very end of the build tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started building. Uh, we'll begin with our HABs placement. Okay, so for the HAB placement, um, I'd like to quick talk about how I've handled the ladder placement before we start placing these HABs so you can kind of understand what's going on here as we build these um, the HABs layout. So if, you've guys, if you guys have watched my previous videos, you know how I generally like to handle um, ladder placement in ships like these with multiple decks. Um, I generally use these one by one cubes, stacks of them, because the ladder system seems to prioritize placing ladders in these one by one stacks. Um, you're probably wondering where my stack is. I don't have one on this build because what I found was that in these Habs, um, it, it wants to place the ladder in the back half of the cube. Um, so if you think of this as two cubes, uh, I call this the back cube and the front cube. So in the back cube is where it wants to place all the ladders. So we have this nice, you know, we have our docker, we have our landing bay, and then one ladder that goes up and down. So a quick note about these two guys up here. Um, we're kind of forcing a ladder connection right here. So the control station, it does prefer to place a ladder in the back. And I don't know if it's the same with the computer core, actually. I don't use this one very often, but we can just check that right now. You can check this by hovering over your connector point like this and um, just kind of flipping through the habs in the build menu and see how these are like shifting forward and backward. That's because that's where it wants to put the ladder, at least in my experience. That's the, um, but so yeah, look at that. It seems like it's gonna wanna put the ladder in the back. Um, so there is a bit of a concern here if we do these like so that a ladder might end up forming here and making you know the player do a ladder maze, uh, but I try to build these habs several times before I make these videos just to make sure that the ladder placement's going to work okay. Um, so I've never had a ladder form right here before. This has never been a problem. So I'm just going to show you how I build this as normal. And if you guys have any issues with the ladder placement here, please let me know in the comments section and I can probably end up helping you guys out. Um, but uh, as far as I know, the way we're about to build this, all the ladders should be right here. Except for this one, of course. We're going to have one little ladder on the bridge, but, you know, that's the way it's going to be. So, anyway, with the ladder placement out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get building. So go ahead and open up your build menu and um, tap on over to your landing base tab. We're going to start with our landing bay. We're going to use a Shipbed 200 landing base, so go ahead and place one of those guys in your builder. Okay. Go ahead and tap over to your Habs tab. Um, right on this front connector on the landing bay, we're going to use a Hope Tech Workshop. Just like this. Okay. Uh, go ahead and tap over to your Dockers tab and focus on this bottom point here. Uh, we're going to use this 100 DP Slim Docker on the bottom. Just like this, okay. So now to place these um, sort of ladder well habs, I, it might be safer if we hover on the points. I don't think it's necessary, but we might as well do it that way. So if you hover your mouse cursor over this point and select a Hope Tech Living Quarters hab, it's gonna go just like this. 
Okay, and then on top, on this anchor point right here, we're going to be placing a Hope Tech Armory. Just like that. And here's, this is the point where I, I worry that the uh, ladder may get screwy, but uh, I think it'll be okay. So on this point right here, we're going to be placing a Hope Tech Control Station. Just like that. Okay. And then, on this spot right here, tab over to your Cockpits tab. That's where our Overseer 400 bridge is going to get placed. So here we have it. This is our main walkway, our main path from entry and exit points to the bridge. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these guys over here put on. So right here on this second deck, this is the living quarters. I like to consider this deck the crew berth deck. So on this side, we're going to be placing a captain's quarters. And then right behind the captain's quarters, we're going to have a storeroom. On the other side, on the same on the same deck, we're going to be placing a Hope Tech All-in-One Berth. Then another one by one behind it. Either one by one for these works, uh, storeroom or companionway, it's whichever one you choose. Um, just as a quick note, we don't actually need these here. Um, but what we do need is if you don't want to place these interior spaces, you can use any old, you know, cargo hold or structural piece, but you need to make sure it's got connectors on all of its faces because these are going to be structural anchor points later on when we start placing all these items. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus on this point upstairs. We're going to be using a 3x1 engineering bay, just like that. Then again, we're placing another not really necessary 1x1, one one, but it's there for exterior aesthetics. Um, I wanted to have something behind the bridge, something solid looking, um, so I just decided to place a 1x1 one one there. Not to mention, we're going to be placing a couple windows on either side, so you know you can kind of think of it as a bit of a crow's nest. So right here in the front on top of our uh, armory in the front of our control station here, we're going to be placing a Hope Tech computer core. Just like this. And that completes our interior HABs layout. So as you can see, it's nothing too terribly complicated. Um, there's one little opportunity, I believe, for the ladder placement to go a little crazy. Um, but uh, it should work. It's worked for me every time, so I hope it works for you guys too. If it doesn't, again, please let me know in the comments section and uh, I will try to help you guys fix it. Okay. So with that done, let's go ahead and move on to the big pile of stuff. Okay, so to start placing all these items here in the big pile of stuff, as I call it, um, we're going to be flip-flopping between different build menu categories a lot, so I'm going to try to keep this as clear and concise as I can, and hopefully it'll be easy enough for you to follow here. Um, we're going to be going a little bit out of whack. I try to usually make it pretty, you know, easy to, to follow, you know, going in one direction, but this we are going to have to kind of go a little bit out of whack here and there. Um, we're also going to be doing a little bit of glitch building here and there too. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to start in the center um, before, because all these items that we're going to be placing, it's going to close, sort of close off this this middle section here, and it's going to be kind of a pain to see in there. So let's go ahead and get these interior modules placed first. So go ahead and um, tab on over to your reactors tab. We're going to be mounting our reactor right here between our two one by one cubes like this. Um, so let's pull this guy out. So I'm using the 104 DS mag inertial reactor. This is the top grade level 60 and above B class reactor. That's going to go right in there. And then if we tab on over to our grab drives, right above our reactor is where we're going to mount our grab drive. I'm using the RD3000 beta grab drive. Gets its max, max jump range. Okay. So let's go ahead and focus on this point right here on our, our reactor. We're going to be mounting this extra large 650 ton helium-3 tank. This 900T HE3 tank is going to go right here. Just like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and assemble our little tail section here. So let's go ahead and move on up top. 
So focusing on this point on our one by one cube, go ahead and tab on over to your shields tab. Um, if you copy my build exactly, this is where our N420 generator is gonna go, just like so. So go ahead and tab over to your structurals tab. On either side of our one by one, we're just gonna place a porthole one per side. Then directly behind here on our connector right there, we're gonna place a Hope Tech pipes aft. Okay. Then right here, we're gonna place an equipment plate. Like so. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at our our sides here. We're gonna be placing four portholes, as you can see here. Um, here and here on either side. So go ahead and just get those four windows placed like this. So we're gonna get a little bit messy here to achieve this look. We're gonna be employing gratuitous use of the copy glitch. So if you don't know how to do the copy glitch, uh, I'm not gonna go through how to perform it in this video, uh, but right now I'm going to link a uh, video where I explain how to do it in detail up here in the card. Um, so go ahead and watch that short clip now if uh, you need to learn how to do that copy glitch. But um, for now, let's just go ahead and get started. So before we perform our glitches to get this look, uh, we're going to need to sort of get our space prepared. So go ahead and focus on the back part of our engineering bay. Tap on over to your engines tab. Okay, we're going to be placing our two Slayton SAE engines on the back like this. Okay, uh, we're going to be having this as an anchor point for uh, our, our uh, glitch here in just a second. Okay, so next, go ahead and tab over to your structural parts. Flip your camera around to look at the belly here. Um, underneath our engineering bay, we're going to put a Stroud engine bracer B right here and another one right there. So take two engine bracer Bs from Stroud and attach them like this, okay? Next, we're gonna go ahead and focus on this spot right here on our fuel tank, the uh, lower connector. Uh, we're gonna be placing a Hope Tech Pipes mid there. And then we're gonna just copy another one. We're gonna be placing two. So go ahead and stick another one on the end of uh, the first one like this, okay? So now we're ready to perform our first copy glitch. So just highlight both of them and then control G. And there we go. Successfully glitch build. Now the reason I went through so much trouble at having these engine bracer bees glitched inside the Hope Tech pipes is because it's a bit nitpicky, but <laughs> I like this detail right here. When you're flying in space and the sun's shining directly on it, um, before I had these uh, Stroud bracers in there, the sun just shone right through these pipes. And so having these little pillars in between the pipes really give it more of a beefier structural look without taking too much away from having this look, you know, being able to see through it. So I, don't, I really like having these pillars in here. So yes, it is, it is cosmetic only. <laughs> So let's go ahead and perform our second and final copy glitch for this tail section here. If you can see over here, we've got a, a Hope Pipes aft glitched inside of this skeg. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get that done. First, we're gonna need to place the skegs though. So go ahead and focus on these two spots uh, underneath. Um, I, would, I would pay very close attention to what you're highlighting, by the way. Uh, I don't think it's really going to matter where these skegs attach to. Just for continuity's sake, I would be very careful which part you're attaching your B skegs to. Anyway, go ahead and place your two Deimos B skegs. Just like so. So to get this pipe up in here, um, we're going to have to get a little bit creative. So to get our space ready to do the glitch build, um, how I'm going to handle this, I'm just going to quickly move this landing bay off temporarily. Um, and I'm going to place a couple of uh, Deimos Hull A's. Two of them right in front of each other like this, okay? And then right here you can place your um, Hope Tech Pipes aft. 
And then we're just going to copy glitch it straight up, and I believe it's going to attach to this helium-3 tank, so... There we go. Easy. Easy. Let's just double-click to make sure it's all connected. Yep, we're good. So go ahead and take your landing bay and move it back on there. And, um... Real quick, this looks, you're probably wondering why in the heck is this here? This is where our, our rear landing gear is going to get mounted. Um, I've got this little Hope Tech landing foot in the back. We don't actually need it. It's got enough landing thrust from, from these four pieces here and then these two side mounted uh, landing gear. We don't actually need that, but if without a little foot sticking out, when it's landed, I just couldn't stand having this <laughs> tail section making it kind of look like the ship was going to teeter backwards. So, yes, again, a glitch build for cosmetic stuff only. But you guys should know me by now. Anyways, that completes our tail section for the most part. All the glitch building. If that was your first time doing the copy glitch, congratulations. Uh, it's a bit trickier than some of the other glitch builds, but it really, as you can see, has the potential to really open up new creative outlets for your, you know, exterior ship design. So let's go ahead and finish her up on the back side here. So focusing on our top connector here on our top 5660 engine, tab on over to your structural. Uh, we're going to be placing a Hope Tech Marker A there. Then focusing on the two side mount points for our 5660 engine, we're going to be using two Deimos Wing E aft. Just like that. And then focusing on our lower 5660 engine on the two side mounts, we're going to be tabbing on over to our cargo holds tab. Um, find two Dagama 1000 cargo holds, and they get mounted on the sides like so. And last but not least, let's focus on this bottom connector here. Tab back over to your structural, and find a Deimos Skeg A, flip it aft, and stick it on the bottom like that. Okay? And this completes our whole tail section. It gives it its little, you know, submarine or sailing vessel vibe. Um, you know, without sacrificing too much of the spaceshipiness of this ship. <laughs> so with that tail section complete, let's go ahead and um, refocus on this whole area. Let's get all this stuff placed now. Um, so we'll be starting right here underneath our little role play one by one. Okay, so focus on this spot right here on our engineering bay on either side of the ship. We're going to be tabbing over to our structural tab. And we're going to use two Deimos aft bumpers. Lipped for port and starboard, just like this. Okay. We're going to move forward one spot, but we're going to go down to the very bottom here on this little shelf area here. Um, we're going to use two Hope Tech radiators on either side, just like this. Okay. Let's move up a couple slots right here. On either side of the ship, we're going to be using two Deimos Wing Seas. As you can see, it's red. It won't let us build it because it's glitching inside of the radiator here. So we're going to need to perform a flip glitch build to get those fitted into, into place. Uh, again, I'm not going to show how to do that in this video, but go ahead and check up here right now. I'm linking a card on how to perform the flip glitch. So go ahead and watch that if you're not sure how to perform the glitch build. It's really easy, I promise. So let's go ahead and get those glitch built in. So I'm going to go flip it in. Okay, let's do the other side. Double click, and it's all connected. Very nice. All right. So let's go ahead and move forward one spot now. Uh, let's go ahead and check this little spot out. Okay, we're going to be placing a porthole on either side, just like, just like this. Right, porthole on either side. So now focusing on this spot right here, on top of our captain's quarters and on top of the Allah One berth, we're just going to place two Hope Tech pipes A mid. One there, and one here. Nice and easy. So go, let's go ahead and move up one more spot. On the top deck now, on either side of our control station right here, we're going to be placing um, two Deimos Wing Bs, like this. Alright. 
So again, let's um, go down to the bottom area here. In this little shelf area, we're going to be using two Stroud mid bracers. Just like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and focus on this connector point here. Tabbing over to our, our gear tab, we're going to be using our two Hope 55 landing gear right there. So, just like this. Okay, and that bottom section should be hanging down like that. So do that on the other side. Just like that, okay? Next, let's go ahead and look at the tops of our Stroud mid bracers. Tap over to your cargo holds tab. We're gonna be using two Galleon S203s, just like this. Go ahead and tab on over to your structural now. Find yourself a little Hope Tech marker A. We're gonna stick that bad boy right there on top of the cargo hold, okay? Next, under your structural, we're going to be placing four Horizon weapon mounts. Um, so the, we're going to be placing one right here on the side of our Stroud mid bracer on both sides, like so. And then we're going to be placing two more on these little side attachment points on our Hope 55 gear, where it kind of hangs down, just like that. So for a grand total of four Horizon weapon mounts, just like that. And that's where one of our missile batteries is going to be mounted. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get the remainder of these odds and ends placed. So just right here, if we focus on this spot here, we're just going to place portholes on either side. Like this. On both sides. Okay. And last but not least, go ahead and tab on over to your engines tab. Focusing on these two mounting points here, we're going to be placing two Nova 1050 engines, just like this. And that concludes the midship section. Let's just double click to make sure everything's connected. And it looks like everything is good. All right, guys, let's go ahead and um, start assembling our little uh, bow section here. All right, as you can see, I've done a little bit of cleanup here in the build space. Sorry, didn't mean to disorient any of you guys, but uh, here's our new layout. We've got our pile of weapons here, our main build over here, and our little bow section assembly up in the front here. We'll get to these weapons in a momentarily, but let's go ahead and get this whole entire front section placed first. So let's go ahead and focus on this spot right here. We're gonna be building this a little bit weird um, because of how it's laid out. I wanna do all these items in the interior first since we're gonna be closing it up with all the uh, exterior cosmetics. So yeah, go ahead and focus on this spot right here. Pull up your structural tab and we're gonna be placing a noble weapon mount right in that spot there, okay? So let's go ahead and move down one spot right on this spot right here on the living quarters is going to go a Deimos Cowling 4, just like so. Now focusing on this spot right here, we're going to be placing a Hope Tech Radiator. And as you can see, it's it's not going to place. We're going to need the Glitch Builder in. Um, so we're going to be performing a copy glitch to get that up inside the uh, cowling there. So just take this guy here, our Stroud Mid Bracer, and just slap it on the bottom of our workshop real quick. And that bottom anchor point's gonna act as our copy glitch spot. So go ahead and put a radiator there on that mid bracer. Okay, and then just perform the copy glitch. Okay, just double click to make sure it's connected. Cool, it is. And don't forget to delete your mid bracer or whatever you choose to use as your copy glitch anchor point. We don't need that. Okay, and that's, that's that for the interior spot. So let's go ahead and work our way downwards from the top. So focusing on these two spots here, on the sides of our computer core, we're going to be using two Tayo side caps. Okay. Focusing on this spot here and that spot there on our cargo holds, we're going to be using two Nova wings. That's not going to work, so we're going to need the flip glitch build that into, spot, uh, into place. So go ahead and drag one in and flip flip. 
cancel, flip, flip, cancel, double click, and they're both connected. Excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus on this little spot here, uh, right up at the front. We're going to use a tile forward sensor. Okay, and on top of it goes a equipment plate. All right. Next, um, let's go ahead and look at these two spots on our mid bracer and our captain's quarters and same thing on the other side. We're going to be using two Tayo braking engines there up front, like so. Okay. So to wrap it all up, let's build our little uh, pillar of Deimos pieces that kind of form our little bow section foxel area. No glitch building required. This Deimos spine E is going to snap perfectly between these two forks of our Nova weapon mount right underneath our tile forward sensors. So then directly underneath our spine E goes a Deimos spine F flipped aft. You can flip it forward if you want, but then we're going to have this little crevice here and my OCD that bothers me. So I'm, I'm just flipping that aftward. So it's, you know, one nice solid column up front. Then lastly, underneath our spine F, we're going to be placing a skeg A. And that snaps in with zero issues. All right, cool. So congratulations. You've just assembled the entire bow section. Copy glitch and flip glitch and all. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, get our landing gear placed first. And then we'll do our weapons last. Okay, so tabbing on over to your landing gear tab, we're going to begin with these Hope 6 landing gear. So go ahead and start with a Hope 6 landing gear 4 variant. And if we swing our camera to look at sort of the underside here, we're going to be mounting all four of our Hope 6 gear to our workshop like this. Um, it is going to need to get flip glitched into, into spots. So we remember how to do that. So let's go ahead and glitch build our first one in like so. Flip, flip, cancel. Yep. Okay, so the next one we're going to use is the aft variant of the uh, Hope 6 gear. Let's go ahead and glitch build that into place right here. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Done. All right, and then just do that on the other side. And last, we're going to use our Hope 5 landing gear, the little landing foot, and that's going to get attached on the back connector to our aft pipes, like this. Okay. Now I will say, uh, if you don't want these launch thrusters so close to where people walk, uh, you can, at no consequence, um, move it back one spot, like that. Uh, that's that's okay too. I've opted to move it closer for the ex uh, exterior look. Uh, I feel when I have mine too far back, then it sort of takes away from that, you know, silhouette shape that I'm looking for. So I've kind of bit the bullet and moved it a little bit closer. Maybe I'll tell all my crew to wait 30 minutes before disembarking <laughs> so they don't get their hair burned off. Anyway. That's our landing gear. So let's go ahead and get all of our weapons placed. So if you're opting to copy my exact loadout, um, I'll just walk you through how I have it. Obviously it doesn't apply to you if um, you're going with a different loadout. So let's go ahead and look at the quote unquote torpedo bay area. So right here on this back connector on our Nova Galactic weapon mount, um, my, two, my two at Lottel 280Bs are just going back inside of there like this, okay, one per side. All right, and so the four Hunter Mag 450s will just get placed on our four Horizon weapon mounts on the exterior. So first one here, second one on that little underhang area, okay, and mirrored to the other side as well. Yep, cool. So there's our four Hunter Mag launchers. So last, if you've opted to use um, disruptor turrets, uh, sorry, neutron turrets, these um, 3320s are going on the front, one on the back, just like this. And I don't need these anymore, so I can delete those. Boom, gone. 
And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You now have a fully assembled Archer class destroyer. Congratulations. So let's go ahead and talk about the coloring. So I'm not really going to talk about every single piece's individual coloring. I'm just going to talk about my overall mindset here um, for the color scheme. Um, so my overall mindset was basically, as with my other two Hope Tech builds, leave the Hope Tech color untouched. And if I used another manufacturer part, um, try to match try to try my best to match that scheme so as you can see here with this hope tech hab i've left color one and color two default when it's got this red stuff here for one and two um, that means it's the default color um, see here color three i did add a little bit of orange for a little bit of accent honestly just for the heck of it <laughs> just just because I wanted to, um, no real particular reason. Um, but yeah, see here on this Tayo braking engine piece, um, I did have to mess a little bit with color one, color two, and color three to sort of, you know, get a bit of a gunmetal look to it. Obviously, it's a slightly different shade of that gray that Hope Tech uses, and it's shinier than the Hope Tech parts. There's nothing I can do about that. That's just how Tayo handles its its shading and reflections. Um, but uh, yep, that's my coloring mindset. Copy the Hope Tech look. <laughs> so with that, the ship is fully assembled, fully painted. Let's head on down to the Eeg Ship Shop Battle Simulator. Let's go ahead and uh, take her out for a real quick spin against an enemy and see how she performs. So I'll see you in the sim. Okay, so here we are inside the Eek Ship Shop Battle Simulator. Uh, we're not going to be riding into an epic battle or anything. We're just going to find a pair of Starboard Guardians to uh, go pick on. This will be in normal difficulty. So as we approach our first target, you'll see me try to make a couple of dumb fire hits before achieving a lock. And then the third shot, it'll happen fast, but it will be a locked shot. So first, second, then our third hit is a locked on shot. And you can see his shield is gone. We're moving in for another attack. Two dumb fire hits, missed. But the third just happened there. That was a locked hit. It was hard to see. There we go. Two locked hits and that Starborn is gone. So here I'm boosting away. We approached almost 700 meters per second there. So we're flipping around, trying to let our, our missile banks reload a bit. Um, here we go. I'm doing... Yep, there was a dumb fire hit on both batteries I missed. <laughs> There's a, two dumb fire hits and two locked on hits and our second Starborn is down. So as you can see, it's it's a little bit different. You know, it's different if you are if you were like me who charged into battle using particle cannons all the time. This is different. I think it's more fun. Um, you know, I kind of like having close calls like that. The shield drops quite often, but again, we have our speed and maneuverability at our side, and those missiles do hit pretty hard if you know when to shoot. Uh, I will say I only play in normal difficulty anymore. I used to always play in very hard, but personally, I just don't see the point anymore. So I will say the Archer class in its current configuration probably will not make the cut in very hard difficulty. You'll probably get blown to smithereens. So if you're if you want to take this into a very hard uh, combat situation, you're probably going to need to maybe upgrade it to Class C and use particle beams instead of uh, missiles. But that concludes the combat test. It was just a quick one. So let's go ahead and inspect the interior. So I'll see you there. All right, y'all. Here we are at Eek Ship Shop. It's a, another beautiful afternoon as always here. Great views. But right behind me is the Archer class. So let's go on and see what's going on inside. So as we approach it, you can see here, that's why I tried to mimic, you know, ancient earth sailing vessels, kind of keel and bow at the front with the little forecastle thing at the top. And there's our little uh, radiator that we glitch built in place. I might have kind of stolen that little design idea from the Astral Engine Hope Tech style ships I've built in the past as a Quick little note, uh, this ship was originally intended to be an Astral Engine variant, but I ended up scrubbing that from the roleplay lore because um, this ship really kind of just stands out on its own. So I wanted it to uh, kind of have that. So let's go on inside. 
I'm not going to go into great detail on every single hab here. Uh, I'll just give kind of a quick rundown of what's going on. So here's our one, our two by one workshop right at the uh, entry and exit point. This is just something I always do in all my builds. It's just for convenience for me personally. Let's hop up to the second deck. This is what I like to call the crew berth deck. Um, leads into this nice open crew living quarters, a couple of beds there. And uh, right here on the uh, side is our crew berth hab with another couple of beds and it's just kind of a cozier looking looking space a little bit less wide open than the living quarters then over here is my room or whoever's captaining the vessel gets to stay in here their own private hab to themselves and here's um just a quick look at that um unneeded but neat to have one by one little role played as a kind of role played as a storage area with a little window so we can uh, see outside. Let's go on up to the third deck. So here we are in the third deck. Here's these little uh, portholes we placed. Uh, you can't really see a whole lot out of them, but this is something I really like to do in uh, as many builds as I can. Um, this Having a window here and all this stuff in front of it really kind of gives you a good sense of place where you are inside the ship and it also gives in my opinion kind of a cool sense of scale just for how big these pieces are you know ship builders where you constantly look at these little pieces inside the builder and they all look so tiny but you know when you look at it like this from this perspective on foot you're like wow this this ship is actually quite huge so here's our armory and brig right in the center hope tech Armory, not really my favorite one, but uh, keeping with the theme, it's right here. I originally tried to have a Nova Galactic one and a Deimos one, but the bright lights and the shiny trim didn't really make a lot of sense, so hope tech it is. So here we are, I've hopped up to the uh, fourth deck. This is what I like to consider the command and engineering deck. We're moving towards the bow. Here's our little computer core. Um, this right here is where I get concerned where if some some of you try to build along you might end up having a stray ladder right here um, again let me know if this happens in the comments section and I'll try to provide some literature literature to uh, try to fix that so let's go moved move aft there's the ladder to our bridge we'll go up there momentarily there's the ladder to our little never one by one crow's Sorry. nest and here's our three by one engineering bay it's our window so we can see outside i really like having this um three by one engineering bay it really fits with the theme you know you can kind of role play you're flying a warship and you got your main engineering bay of course uh, i understand it probably from a realism and rational side doesn't make a lot of sense to have main engineering be so close to the edge of the ship you know you could have any kind of you know armor piercing round come through here and you know your whole ship's compromised i understand that but um, there was really no other place for me to put this large hab and i wanted it on board so up top it goes <laughs> and here's our little one by one we can hop up here real fast another set of windows so we can look look around it's a little bit of the side of the ship there's our little radiator assembly And last but not least, hey our Good Overseer Bridge. Best views in the house, and where we command the vessel. Get a nice overview of the top of the vessel. When you're flying this thing in first person during combat, it really kind of, at least I feel like, you know, I'm helming a, a uh, destroyer warship. It's a pretty cool place to be. So, with that, it... Everything is the way it's supposed to be. All ladders are in the correct place. Everything's assembled and ready to go, so I shall see you in space. Well, that just about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the builder segment was easy and clear for you to follow. And most importantly, I hope you enjoy your new Archer Class Destroyer. And remember, spacefarers, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I'll see you in the next one.